Welcome to our second podcast of our Unit 2. We're going to be talking about isotopes and how to calculate the average atomic mass. So you need your, pack, your packet and your calculator and your periodic table, and we're at page 6. But let's kind of review on isotopes. Remember, it's how many, you have different pro, um, same protons, because if you had different protons, it would be different elements. So you have same protons, but different neutrons, hence they have different mass. This is just looking at one isotope. Hydrogen 1, this means it has a mass number 1, that's why it just has the one proton, compared to, let's say, lithium. Lithium, its atomic number 3, has those three protons. Four neutrons, that's the mass number 7, adding it together. Again, we're not really looking at the electrons and adding the electrons because it doesn't change to the mass. Now look at over here, though. It's saying in nature, compared to, let's go back, hydrogen, almost 100%. We know there's other isotopes, but pretty much close to 100% is this hydrogen 1. Okay, lithium, there's two other isotopes. So if we kind of go over to here, it's going to show us what nature's mix. Again, this is hydrogen, so if you notice, there's just mostly the purple, one little yellow. The majority is another isotope. Okay, but look at lithium. You can see that there's more of a mix. Um, what's another? Let's see. Neon, you have two of them. Okay, aluminum has many, excuse me, it's one, trying to think of one that's a little bit more exciting. Okay, this one we can see um, sulfur actually has three different isotopes, um, excuse me, four different isotopes, one almost 95%, then we have 0.75%, 4.25%, and 0.01%. This one you're not going to see very much of, but it's a mix. So when we get the number that goes on the periodic table, we are going to have to take into consideration all the different isotopes. But you, as you can see, they all don't contribute the same way, meaning I have more, much more sulfur-32 than I do of sulfur-36. So therefore, when I take the mass into consideration, I have to say, well, I have more of sulfur-32, therefore, it's going to contribute more to the mass. Now, notice again, remember what we said, this is the counting number. Now, we're going to look at what the actual number is, the more the mass number that I use. So, this average atomic mass, if you notice again, there's four of them, but the average atomic mass is going to be closest to the one that you have most of. That's something that you need to keep in mind because at the end you kind of say, okay, does my number make sense? So let's look at how we calculate these numbers then. So we're on the top of page six, and the number one thing we need to do is what you normally think of average. When you think of how to calculate an average, throw it out of your mind. We are not going to just add them up and divide them by how many samples you have. You will not do that. You will not do that. That works so they all contribute the same. What we just looked at is not everything contributes equally, so we have to take that into mind. So when we're doing these, you have to write here, it's a big, it's a weighted average. So if you have something that something has more, if you have a higher percentage of it, it's going to contribute more to the mass. You're going to see that. So notice what you need to know. The mass of the isotope and your percent abundance. So let's look at a general formula then. Just at the top then. Let's just say, okay, average atomic mass. How the general formula will be, take your percentage, but we need it in a decimal form, so to do that you take your percentage divided by 100, that just puts it in a decimal, times the mass of that isotope. Okay, plus the percentage of the other isotope. Again, you need percentage as a decimal, times that mass plus, and you do that for all the isotopes. You have two isotopes, you just do it for two. You have three, you'll do it three times. You have um, five dozen, you would do it for five dozen. You'll never have five dozen, but if you did, we could do it. So it's always the same formula, so write that down at the top. Okay, so look at what I have. This is your first problem there. I have copper, 63, 
Okay, copper 63, I have 69.17%. Now notice this mass, 62.939. You round this up, what does it round up to? 63, so that's how I know this is the mass of the copper 63 isotope. U, okay, U means the same as AMU. Same thing, shortcuts, different books, different people use different ways. So in here my copper 65, then I have 64.9. Okay, look at the mass. 70% of 63, so I expect my answer to be closer to my copper 63. So, average mass, what did we do? Take your percentage, divide it by 100. So I'm going to do this right now, percentage divided by 100. In other words, move the decimals to place. Times it by its mass, 62.939590. Plus, same thing, move the decimal two places, because we need it as a decimal, 64.927793. Add this, now you take the calculator, just do that math on the calculator. The math isn't hard with these, you just have to be careful you don't hit the, that you don't make mistakes, so pushing the button. So this is when I look at this, you have to use that common sense. Does it make sense? So. You've punched all those numbers in, and 63.55 AMUs is the mass for this copper. This is what gets put on the periodic table. So if you notice, you don't put the mass of just one isotope. You have to take into account there's both of them. More copper 63, so the mass is closer to copper 63. Okay, let's do another one. So look at this time, I have three isotopes. This isotope is 91%. This is why I call um, 20, because look at this, rounds up to 20. This one, 21, this one would be 22. Okay, remember, move this to decimal places. Be careful of these. Move them to decimal places. This is where I see those silly mistakes happen, is when you're just moving the decimal two places. So then the mass, average atomic mass, weighted average, 0.9051 times 19.99244 plus your 0 0.0027 times 20.99394 plus the last isotope. This one, three isotopes. You just have to do it for all of them. 99138. We're going to add all of these together. Okay, again, before you hit the calculator, what do you have the most of? Most of um, the 20, and then a little bit more, so my answer is going to be close to 20, but a little bit higher than 20. I, I'm using my common sense before I even touch the calculator to see does that make sense. So, you put all of this in, and you get 20.18 AMUs. That's what we predicted, close to 20, but a little bit higher. Okay. That makes sense to me. So if you look, you have one left. Do some common sense. So let's do the common sense together. There's magnesium 24. It gets its mass number. Again, this is a counting number. This is the actual mass. Counting number, the mass. They're close to each other. So it's close to, you have more magnesium 24. I expect the number's going to be closest to that, but it's going to be a little bit higher because you have two other ones. So you need to finish that problem. Then there's a question at the bottom. At the bottom, well, that sounded, I'm not sure, back east or something. There's a question at the bottom. The element boron has an atomic mass of 10.81. However, no single atom of boron has a mass exactly. Explain why. I want you to come up with an explanation for that one, too. Um, we will see you tomorrow.